Hey y'all, a little bit that pretty sunset there. Pretty here in East Texas. Well, how's the first Monday in December treating y'all? I hope it's well. If you're in Texas and other parts of the South, coffee's not just for breakfast. So, got me a good hot cup and we'll go out here and ponder in my thinking spot a little bit. I've been thinking a lot. Actually, it's kind of funny that I'd put this together in the wake of things. I had no idea that we'd lose such a great man Friday. Um, kind of been reading a lot and loved to read and always admired him. And kind of was pausing a little bit to think, yeah, a little bit redundant. We give him a hat tip. And then the second reason I paused to talk about it was well, I guess it actually validates the whole reason we need to talk about it. It's not about politics. George Bush. The more I read and the more I look, the more it reminds me of my granddad and his service and his attitude. And members of the great, the greatest generation of which George H.W. was one. In fact, I think he was the oldest living president that we've known in our lifetime. But. I, I really was was thinking it through and it's kind of been shocking to me and my granddad was always just especially in his later years was just so saddened at our polar, polarization and uh, he didn't necessarily always vote quote unquote conservative or what you would think a southerner might do and it wasn't about that he was a free thinker and, and uh, he uh, had his own ideals and I respected every one of them and he taught me a lot but polarization the ability for us, to, we can't even talk anymore about everything turning into an argument. And uh, as I'm watching all the, the social media posts and, and things surrounding George H.W., I've seen a trend of kindness. Something he had hoped for was kind of a kinder and more gentle conservatism. But a lot of even my, my liberal friends and those that may think uh, a little less conservative in that shoe box. I hate that box. But uh, everybody's giving homage to a good man. And uh, I look back and as I read some of the things I really didn't know about in depth, I knew some of it, but not the details. And I'm just awestruck with some of the things I'm reading. And the thing that impresses me the most about that man's life was him at age 17, 18 years old, joining the service, not being forced to joining the service and uh, man, our, our military veterans that, that's that's our lifeblood um, they they serve us in ways that we could never imagine and him being shot down losing his whole crew I think I read 300% of his squadron died that's a that's a lot of turnover folks and he was floating out in that ocean at 18 years old youngest naval aviator didn't think he was going to make it and got back on that ship. Thank God they saved him and flew some more and kept going. It wasn't to be a president. It wasn't to be a CIA director. It was just to be an American. And that's what drove that generation. And my God, two generations here, so many of us have lost it. I think that's uh, what I celebrate and I'm just a really heavy hearted about, not in a bad way, but in a in a state of gratitude for those that um, in the media, oh my, I don't even want to get started on that. I miss the days of a Walter Cronkite when they reported the news and not be biased either way. And they're, both sides have it. But uh, just be free thinkers, folks, and appreciate those around us that are protecting our freedoms. One of the things that struck me was the fact of a statesman. And what does that even mean? I hadn't heard that term in a long time. That used to be the, the norm. So I looked it up, researched it a little bit, and couldn't really find the right words for it until I read the thoughts of a uh, professor out of Oklahoma University. He's gone now, passed in 2012, but he kind of defined it the best. He said a statesman and a politician are not the same. A statesman is not a tyrant. He's a free leader over a free people that must possess four characteristics. One, having a moral compass. Two, a firm bedrock of principles. Three was a vision. 
and four, the most important thing about a leader, being able to build a consensus across platforms to fulfill that vision. And I think George H.W. Bush did it. I read some, something from Gorbachev and some of the other ones that, I mean, they were mortal enemies at the end of the Cold War and he was involved with that, but even he had high regard for George H.W. That's pretty phenomenal when your quote unquote enemies have good things to say about you. What a pattern to live our own life. We can all be statesmen in our own little worlds, whether it be at work or with our family or at home. Those four characteristics really stopped me in my tracks today as I thought about it and how I can do so much better in all four arenas. But, uh, truly, truly honored to have been able to read about that man, being able to vote for him when I was a young man. Of course, didn't even know why I was voting, I'll admit it. <laughs> Just post to vote Republican. <laughs> just kidding but we learn we learn to think and to uh, vote on the character and the, the person that's running for a little bit more than what's behind their name whether it be an R or a D but uh, just cool thoughts tonight out here by the old fire and an old tree <laughs> can't beat it can't beat it at all well I hope y'all having a good day I won't ramble on about George H.W. The more I read, the more it just blows my mind. It really does. Um, that whole generation. And if we don't learn from their even keel and tolerance, we're doomed. So I'll take a few lessons from his life and see if I can integrate them a little bit better into mine. Let's do a little quick roll call and we'll call it an evening. Let's see, there's Carolyn from Miserable, Missouri. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> Karen saying good evening. My buddy Mike Howington up in New Jersey. He's watching. Good man, good friend of mine. Let's see who else we got there. There's Pamela. Good evening. Yes, you're right, Patrice. That, that's right. And I sure hope anybody watching this deep, don't, this, this isn't about politics at all. It's about the human condition and being a decent person. The quicker we realize that, the quicker we'll have some decent politicians. Because that's how we'll be voting. That's how I think anyway. <laughs> hey, Angela, how are you? And that's all the politics I'm going to say. Hey, there's the birthday girl up in North Carolina. Hey, sweetheart. It's tonight. Thanks for checking in. There's Molly. How are you? And Sandra. Good to see all of y'all. But uh, my coffee's about getting cold over there. I'm going to have to go get me another fill up. And... Uh, may sit out here and think about statesmen and the difference and how maybe we can apply it in our lives. Couldn't we all? I think so. Y'all be the light. Have a good evening. I'm going to go refill this cup of coffee. See if I can see a couple of stars pop out here in a little bit. But, uh, hat tip to a great man, a great American, a statesman, George H.W. Y'all don't forget Wednesday. National Day of Mourning. I saw uh, Trump 30. Of course, that's tradition. The markets will be closed. And uh, flags are at half staff for 30 days. Hope we uh, remember some of these thoughts when you see those flags at half staff. It's uh, worth remembering. It truly is. Thank you from the bottom of my heart to all of our veterans and those that continue to serve and watch their uh, brothers in arms die around them and come home and ask why. Well, there's a bigger reason to live the life that uh, we should live and strive to be the statesman and honor that sacrifice. Y'all have a good evening. Be the light.